Hello, hello. How's everyone doing? Hopefully doing well. So we're picking up from last week, where we had left off in Matthew 26. We we're concentrating on the prayers that Jesus offered. And he also, uh, was, well, no, no, we were talking about the lessons in John 15 and 16, where God, Jesus was walking. And let me bring that picture up. Walking between the upper room and Gethsemane, and uh, let me put this picture up here. This is this is called the Kinron Valley, <clears throat> and they would have come. Uh, this is the Temple Mount up here. They most likely would have come around the corner around here, some of these paths, and walking this direction. Basically, where this picture is being taken is really right on the edge of the Garden of Gethsemane. And so I believe that I, when we left chapter 16, he was just approaching this area. And it, there used to be a river right here called the uh, Cedron River. Now there's a highway. So let me just kind of show you. This is this is looking from the Temple Mount. That area we were just looking at was right here in the bottom. We were looking that way. So that wall you saw off, off to the left side was right here. And right here is where the traditional... Uh, Garden of Gethsemane is right in this little courtyard of this building. This is a church. I got to be honest. I don't like the fact that uh, the Orthodox uh, uh, Greeks built the, built the church and also the Catholics built the church on all these holy sites. And I guess I don't know. Uh, I'm kind of one who likes to leave things natural. So it's so this is the actual site right here. But most likely in Jesus' time frame, this whole area was, and there was no buildings here. And that river was actually right here where this highway is now. So the little piece of uh, the garden we still have left is right here. So uh, this would be the general area where Jesus would have been praying, which we're going to lead into now. And this, this first is a prayer he does in John 17. That I'm going to cover today. And then we're going to move in. Uh, and tomorrow we'll move into the uh, the prayer that probably everyone thinks about. The one where he reaches out to the Father about taking this cup away from me. And that's where the rest of Matthew goes. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, oh Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, uh, uh, for, these, uh, for, for just reflecting on this moment when the Lord was uh, was uh, thinking more about his disciples and about, him, uh, about the things that were uh, going to be in their future, in our future. And not so much about himself until uh, until finally at the end he uh, cried out to you uh, whether or not he, he needed to go through what he went through. I don't know any human being that I would want to see have to go through that. Never mind uh, your son, uh, Lord. And that, uh, just a horrible thought. Uh, but uh, we praise you, Lord, so much for your love that uh, you want to do this. But let's look at your prayer, too, the, the prayer for us. And you thought of us first. And thank you and praise you so much. Help me, Lord, uh, to be honest and truthful about your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So this last prayer uh, in John is in 17. And uh, when you look at verse 18, uh, you'll know that they're actually, uh, most commentators believe that John 17, which is a prayer also, uh, was actually, quote, was actually said in the garden, and because John recorded it, I'm thinking that he overheard Jesus praying it. Uh, he, he was able to record it word for word into the Bible. And that's where we get this from. So we're going to see when we start off that uh, at this point in Matthew is when they are approaching the garden here. And we'll, we'll start there and we will proceed into the prayer. Okay, so verses... Oh, well, just realized something. Hold on one second, I gotta fix something. Okay, now get the right verses. So I'm just gonna read two verses from Matthew twenty six. 
And this is where I think that this particular prayer in John 17 comes into play. Then came Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. So that was the bulk of the disciples were in, uh, off in the distance. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. He, t he took with that, but he took three of them, and, and three of them actually went to where he was praying, or really close to where he was praying. Of course, we know Peter, and then the two sons of Zebedee would be James and John. So that's where I think John was actually a witness to this prayer. So God, so Christ is going to intercede with the Father, and that's basically what this prayer is. It seems probable that this high priestly prayer uh, was uttered after they reached the garden, and that's what I just read. We mentioned before that at this point where Jesus ended the Olivet Discourse, Jesus ends his period as a prophet. The Olivet Discourse was earlier in the week, so we're, we're, this is the day before the crucifixion. Actually, the evening before. And at the point that, uh, that he left the Olivet Discourse, he went into a mode where he was now uh, left his prophet area, of course, foretelling the future. Uh, and now he's in his role as priest. We read in Matthew 26, 1 and 2. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. So he entered into the mode of our high priest, offering himself as the ultimate sacrifice for sin, as our high priest did with lambs and goats. As the, as the high priest did with lambs and goats, he's going to offer himself. But his sacrifice will be the one that... His sacrifice is the one that ends the need for sacrifice. So in John 19.30 speaks to this. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. That means that uh, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. We'll get to that in a couple of days, uh, possibly even tomorrow, but it'll probably be the following week when we get into the actual crucifixion phase. Uh, but that uh, that's the point in time when he offered himself, and he says, it is finished. That means that the, the need to sacrificing bulls and goats was over. That was not necessary anymore. And that's and thus the tearing of the veil that we see in Matthew twenty seven fifty one. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. So that's the point in time where Jesus sacrificed and paid that sin debt, going all the way back to Adam and Eve, uh, for us, that 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 the, the dividing uh, factor between us and the Father had been torn in two. So it's through Jesus Christ's sacrifice that we're able to enter in and have, to have uh, fellowship with God himself. It's also mentioned in Luke 23, 44 through 47. It was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw that was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly that was a righteous man. So back to the Gethsemane, so the day before. And so let's read through this prayer by Jesus. And I want you to be understand that this, uh, it's interesting that uh, we've given the name uh, to a prayer that shows up in Matthew 6, 9 through 13. And people call it the Lord's Prayer. I don't really like to call it the Lord's Prayer. I like to call it God, uh, Jesus' example of a prayer. And I'll show you why. Let me read through it again. And most people don't read the entire part. Let's start, in, let's start in Matthew 6, 9. And, and this, uh, the disciples had asked him earlier to teach them how to pray. And this is the uh, best example of his answer. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. So after this manner, meaning using this as, a, as an example, uh, a, like an outline. Pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So known as the Lord's Prayer, which was a, a, tweet, a teaching tool, not an actual prayer from Jesus to the God the Father, I believe. Since what they call repetitive prayers are not encouraged. So, we, so you're not supposed to repeat prayers. You're supposed to pray from the heart and pray using your, what you're, like you're actually having a conversation with the God Almighty. And we, so we, and, and even Jesus himself mentions that about uh, not to do uh, vain repetitive prayers in Matthew 6, 7, and 8. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. But be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of, but ye, ye ask him. That was have a conversation uh, like, a fa like a son to a father. So this prayer here in, in John 17 is a real prayer by Jesus, I believe, uh, that was, uh, it really shows how Jesus prayed, not only for his apostles, but for us. And so that's what we're going to look at today. So I should keep a few things in mind when you read through this. Actually, seven areas. This is actually Schofield in, the, in this Bible suggested. The seven areas that Jesus' prayer is divided into. To keep these in mind as we read through it. That Jesus may be glorified as the Son who has glorified the Father. For restoration to the eternal glory. For the safety of believers from the world and also from the evil one. For the sanctification of believers a spiritual unity of believers, that the word may believe, that believers may be with him in heaven to behold and share his glory. And so uh, in verse 1 uh, of 17, the first verse, it, it also speaks to, let me, let me uh, just put that verse up here. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. There's a passage of Philippians that uh, helps to understand uh, that relates to this. Then Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. I love this passage. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall buy of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So let's get started with this. In those seven areas, I'm gonna, I actually put them on a, uh, uh, okay, I gotta find it again. Okay, I'll put them on a slide, just one second, I'll, I'll get this light up. Let's put it up earlier. So uh, having a great week, I hope. I had to reboot my computer and I had to shut it down. Now I lost track of where it's at. Uh, dang that. Bit. There it is. Okay. I don't know if you, you see that okay. Uh, so I'll just leave those up there. That, uh, uh, these are the seven petitions we're going to see in this prayer as we go through it. 
So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to read through the prayer, and then I'm just going to uh, comment on a few of the a few parts of it. So let's read through. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that the son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is the life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work that thou hast given me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifest the name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest me them, gavest, gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Verse 7. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou hast given me, and they have received them, and have given surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou dost send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. I now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, O Holy Father, keep thou thy own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have more my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them the word, and the word and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is the truth. And thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. And for thy sakes I sanctify myself, and they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, this is where the church comes in. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe in on me through their word. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, and they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Verse 22. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I and them and thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known thee that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them by my name, and I will declare it that the love wherewith they hast loved me may be in them and I in them. Okay. So that's the prayer that Jesus prayed to the Father on behalf of us and the apostles. And so let's take a few minutes and, and let's break down a few of these verses. So start off first in verse 4. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. So he has finished the work. So what is the, what is the work he was given to do? Well, it's in John 19.30. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. What he was finishing is that the, uh, the sacrifice, the final payment uh, for sin. And it actually goes all the way back to Daniel 9.24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make a re reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision of prophecy and to anoint the most holy. 
the important part of that is that uh, there's a total of 70 weeks to finish the transgression. Right now, at Jesus' death and burial and resurrection, it was only the 69th week. So there's one more week. So there's one more period of time before they can completely get rid of sin, completely. And, uh, of course, that's the tribulation period, which still has to come. Okay. On to verse uh, John 17, 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with that, thy own self, with the glory which I have, I, I had with thee before the world was. For some reason, I missed putting that in my notes. Okay, I have to wing it. Uh, now, O Father, glorify thou me with them, own self, with glory which I have with thee before oh, before the world was. Jesus has existed not as a not as a, a human. But he has existed since the world began. And of course, we see this in John 1.1 1, 1 and 1.2. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word, be the same was in the beginning with God. And if you jump down to verse 14, and the Word was made fresh and dwelt among us as we beheld his glory. And the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the word here is identified as Jesus Christ when he came to earth. So he is the word. Also Philippians 2, 5 and 6. But this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. That's Hebrews 1 3. Also Hebrews 1 10. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thine hands. So Jesus has existed since the world began, he was in the beginning. Okay, now on verse 8. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst set me. So talking about being sent by God the Father. This goes all the way back to Deuteronomy 18.15. The Lord thy God will raise up thee unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren. Like unto me, unto him you shall hearken. That's, that's Moses, actually, uh, a prophecy of the future coming of Jesus Christ. Now, moving down to verses 18 and 19 of Deuteronomy 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command them. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So being sent, okay, that goes all the way back to Moses' time frame. It was prophesied that he was going to be being sent. Actually, it goes all the way back to Genesis uh, 3.15. Okay, John 17.11, and here. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, O Father, keep thou though thine own name, those whom thou hast given me. We're talking about keeping, keeping them uh, protected, that they may be one as we are. It's to keep them uh, uh, close by uh, within our own hands. And so Acts 13 speaks to this, verses 38 and 39. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified for all things, which will, which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Also Isaiah thirty two seventeen, and the works of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness quietness, and assurance forever. And also Jude one, Jude the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Christ Jesus, and called. Okay, so going down to verse 14. 
talking about the word again, I have given them the word. And, they, and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Be ye separate. That's what that's talking about. You see in Psalms 119, 42, reflects on this. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproaches me, for I trust in thy word. Also Psalm, uh, jump to verse 50, Psalm 119, 50. This is my comfort and my affliction, for the word hath quickened me. And jump to verse 161. Shin, princes have prescribed me without a cause, but my heart standeth in awe of the word. Mark sixteen fifteen also. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Acts four twenty nine. And now, Lord, behold thy threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness that we may speak the word. So now talking about the world system, uh, when you see Earth in this uh, next passage, is it, you're talking about the cosmos, which is basically the planet Earth. Going to John 18, 36. And Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Also John 7, 7. The, word, the world cannot hate you, but but me and hate it, because I testify of it, that the works there are of evil. And Revelation 13, 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Okay, so talking about the world, the world dead air again. Now going to verse 16 of John 17. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Separation, it's important to realize that we are ambassadors here for Christ. It's like uh, like in the mission field, being sent from uh, sent from Jesus Christ uh, to uh, proclaim him to the whole world. So we're not of this world either. And Romans 12, 12 speaks to this. And be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Genesis 12, 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. That was, he separated himself from his old life on a mission for the Lord, Abram, better known as Abraham. And Paul mentions too in 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 17. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Belial is like a, a false god. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Now going on to verse 21 of chapter 17, of John 17. And that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, that's the part we're focusing on. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world, world may believe that thou hast sent me. As thou, Father, and Romans 12, 5 speaks to this. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every member, and every one is member is one of another. Ephesians 4, 1 and 6. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that we walk worthy of vocation, wherewith ye are called. Verse 6, uh, One God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and, and, and in you all. Okay, John 17, 22. Talk about the glory of the Lord. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. 2 Corinthians three eighteen, But we all, with open face, bow holding, as in the glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the spirit image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. 
Now go into John 17, 24. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou livest me before the foundation of the world. This is spoken of in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, apart so, raptured, together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be in the Lord. And verse 26, last one we're going to look at in this passage. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that thou love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. That thy love, Ephesians 3, 16 and 19, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be the strengthened with wit, with might by his spirit in the inner man. Verse 19. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. So that is the prayer. That's Jesus' prayer for us. That's something Jesus does every day for us. He, uh, he's there in heaven praying for us, strengthening us, uh, and, uh, and being an advocate for, with the Father uh, from Satan's attacks. So uh, it's good to know that we have an advocator for us in heaven. He's basically our legal counsel. He's uh, Every time G uh, Satan comes up with an attack to attack us, uh, the Lord is standing there to defend us. And so praise the Lord. Uh, we have a, uh, a full-time advocate with the Father. So I hope that was a blessing. I, I always like reading through and studying that prayer. Uh, it's the one time you actually hear Jesus praying. We know he prayed a lot. He used to go to the mountains and pray and uh, and uh, quite often. Go by, off by himself and pray. And I got to admit, I like doing that also. I wish I could find more time to do it. Uh, it's something I really do enjoy. So I hope you guys all have a, uh, a great day. And we will talk again tomorrow. We'll head into the agony in the garden. That's the famous passage. Uh, back to Matthew. Uh, where Jesus is actually crying out to the Lord uh, to maybe uh, find another way than the uh, cross, which we know he didn't. And so we'll talk about that tomorrow. Have a good day. And let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, oh, Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you so much for the prayers that you, you pray for us and that we love you and we care for you so much that I uh, can't wait to meet you in person, that be... Uh, be with you always. Looking forward to that day, day so much, Lord. And I give you all the praise and thanks for all you do. Be with us all as we continue our day, that we could be uh, fruitful, be able to maybe share the gospel with someone else, and uh, and make a new friend uh, that we can bring to the, bring to your table. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Okay. Talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>